This whole thing started for me um, a couple of days ago when my media specialist at my school, Megan Harapat, she sent me a link to this video here. This is How to Make a Clickable Choice Board by Chris Stanchner. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but he is amazing. And I have used his tutorials before. He explains it really well. So I jumped on and watched what he had to say already working on my uh, choice board or my digital learning platform which was going to be using Google Slides and I had already created quite a bit of this. Um, it has my information with links, um, the steps that I want the students to do, a little bit of explanation of the theme of the week, the different choices that students get to do and um, to for an assignment, they get a choice board. And then lastly, um, how to upload it if you are a K through two or a three through five. And then last is some contests and challenges, but that's not really the important part in this tutorial. What I'm talking about is how he, uh, that Chris, that video that I just showed you, showed me how to publish this, um, to the web. So I'm going to let you check out his video to really find that out. But one thing that I do want to point out is that this does have to be shared with anyone. So if you go up here and click and say add more, you need to share it with anyone. So that's going to make this next portion possible. Okay, now I'm in Seesaw and I'm going to activities. This is the teacher version. I can browse my library where I've already created this, but I'm going to just do a quick recreation of this slide. So I'll go to my library and here we are. Create a new activity, um, title it, put the instructions, and then add media. And this is explained again on Chris's, but just a quick link is going to make this show up. We say continue here and it should look like your slide. Now, if you do not share the permissions or share a link with anyone, it won't look like this. So that's why I think that part is important in this. And then he goes on to explain the template deal as well. So um, again, watch his, his tutorial. I don't wanna step on his toes or recreate what he's made. Um, I just want to show you now about scheduling assignment that I created, becoming an architect week one and a little description, but pretty much everything's in the slide. So I don't have to repeat myself too much. And then I created a template and basically it was, um, I don't know if I'm able to go in here and edit. It doesn't look like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So all it is, is adding, um, a picture or a slide. And I wrote, look what I made. And then this is for the advanced response. This is how I made it. And boom, that's it. That's all they have um, to turn into me. They're gonna go to activities and find this, fill it out by the end of the week, and boom, we can I, I can see what they're making. Okay, let's talk about the assignment. So what I'm going to do is I have all of my classes, K, one, two, and I can easily, this is the best part, I can easily just go through and click, click, click all of them, and then I can schedule it, and that's the important part for distance learning for me. We are starting on Monday the 30th, and at 9 a.m. is when I want this assignment to drop or be shared with my students. So I'm going to schedule that. Look at it, it says assign this March 30th, 2020 at 9 a.m. I'm gonna click that and it should go um, live at that time, which is a huge advantage when you're doing distance learning. I don't want these students to have it um, ahead of time, but I do want them to have it when it's time to learn.